What is the Munchausen trilemma? The Munchausen trilemma is kind of a funny story. It starts with a German folk tale, but demonstrates or has become the nickname for a problem in what is called in philosophy, the problem of epistemology, which is a theory of knowledge or how do we, we know what we know. So the story goes like this. Here's a picture here to illustrate it. Where Baron Munchausen is riding down the road with his horse and accidentally rides into a swamp and he got stuck. And in order to free himself and his horse from the mire, he couldn't get out. He came up with a clever solution that if he grabbed his own hair and pulled upward, he could pull himself and his horse out of the swamp. So he did that and made it out. Now, obviously, this is impossible. That's kind of the funny point of this story, of this German folktale. Additionally, this has become the nickname for this three-part problem in epistemology, which is that theory of knowledge or the question of how we know what we know. And... So the Munchausen trilemma has become illustrated something like this, that we will find that this answer, when we answer, try to answer this question, that any answer to this question of how do we know what we know will give one of three logical problems that would make knowledge impossible. Number one is infinite regress. See this here. So if we just keep asking why in a chain of reasoning, keep asking, well, how do you know that? Well, how do you know that? Kind of like a two or three year old. Why? Why? And you keep pushing it back. But the chain ultimately has to come down to one of these three possibilities. The problem is each of these three possibilities is a logical inconsistency. And if all of our knowledge is based on logical inconsistencies, then knowledge is impossible. So here are the options. Infinite regress, circular reasoning, or axiomatic grounding. So infinite regress is one possibility. If you keep asking why, how do we know what we know? So you ask something, how do you know A? The answer could be because of B, some other reason underneath that. And you say, okay, well, how do you know B? Well, because of C, another reason underneath B. Well, how do you know C because of D? and so on into infinity. And so that it would be that there's these con this constant chain of reasoning going on forever. And truth is believing something because of good reasons. That's, or that, that's rather how we come to knowledge of the truth. Believing something that is true because of good reasons. That is where we get to knowledge. Knowledge could also be just that I could be termed justified true belief. So infinite regress is one possibility. That there's always another reason underneath why you believe something. But if that really goes on infinitely, this creates a problem. Infinite regress means that there's always another reason underneath why someone knows something. An infinite number of reasons, however, means infinite knowledge or infinite possibilities. So finite humans cannot access infinite knowledge. Therefore, knowledge becomes impossible because we couldn't know all those things and all those reasons running into if infinity. So therefore, we really can't know anything at all because we don't really know the reasons that underlie it because they go on forever. The next option is 
circular reasoning. Maybe there is a stopping point, but circular reasoning goes like this. How do you know A, some proposition or truth claim? How do you know A? The answer is because of B. Well, how do you know B? And the answer is because of A, that these reasons mutually reinforce each other. But circular reasoning or question begging has an explanatory chain that ends, so it doesn't go on forever like infinite regression, but ends by assuming what it seeks to prove, a logical error. This makes reasoning arbitrary, even if it is consistent. It means that even if it's logically valid, there's no reason for it. It's, it's an arbitrary belief. A proves B, and B proves A. But there's no reason for believing that if it is arbitrary. And so both claims lack justification, good reasons, for why they are true. The third possibility, if not infinite regression or circular reasoning, is axiomatic grounding. Why do you believe A? Because of A. A cannot be explained. If something else is underneath A, a true axiom is underneath, a truer axiom is underneath, there, there's another ultimate standard. Then that is your ultimate standard. But it runs into the same question. Well, how come you believe that? Well, because of itself. There's, it can't be explained. It's just a brute fact with no justification or reasons. So the chain of reasoning ends in at least one unjustified ultimate standard or axiom that cannot be explained. All other beliefs on this unjustified standard are themselves unjustified. So here's the problem. If ultimately everything depends on an axiom that is unjustified, and just is, and we can't give reasons for it, and it can't be explained, then that means all other knowledge built on this unjustified ultimate standard become themselves unjustified, which means all our beliefs are unjustified, all our no knowledge claims are unjustified, and therefore knowledge is impossible. Now, we could add to this another problem and make this a quadrilemma, have a fourth option. And the fourth option actually comes out of the conclusion of the trilemma. Because the conclusion of all of this seems to be that knowledge is impossible. Knowledge is justified true belief. So the conclusion is that that is impossible because it is all based on logical errors or arbitrariness or both. But there's a big problem if we say that knowledge is impossible. If we demonstrate that knowledge is impossible, we have immediately added another self-refuting statement to the mix because it is a claim to knowledge to say knowledge is impossible. We must know that knowledge is impossible, which means we have knowledge in order to refute knowledge, which also becomes logically inconsistent. So what is the solution or the conclusion? Human beings are in a position where logically they can neither deny nor affirm knowledge. They can neither deny nor affirm knowledge on their own, autonomously. Logical errors typically involve inconsistency or and or arbitrariness. Inconsistency is a contradiction, an internal contradiction 
that makes something false or mistaken. And arbitrariness is saying something, making a claim without reasons. So knowledge is justified, true belief. Your belief has to be true, but it also has to be justified, have good reasons for believing it. Otherwise, you even if you believe the truth, it would not be for good reasons because you believe based on nothing. So all claims in the final analysis are circular. But there's a difference between being arbitrarily circular and being non-arbitrarily circular. Circular reasoning is technically valid, but it is usually considered fallacious or a logical error because it usually involves arbitrariness, lacking justified reasons for believing something. A virtuous circle, as opposed to vicious circular reasoning, a virtuous circle, however, is a circular argument that is valid and non-arbitrary. For example, assuming laws of logic in order to argue for laws of logic. Assuming our reasoning in order to use our reasoning. Or using our senses in order to demonstrate the reliability of our senses with limits. It can be reasonable to believe in something if one must assume it exists in order to argue against it. And the question is, what worldview accounts for and provides a basis for the laws of logic, reasoning, and using our senses that does not ultimately appeal to arbitrariness? And the answer is the biblical worldview biblical theism in general, and Christianity in particular. Proverbs 1.7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. That the fear of the Lord is there as the ultimate standard at the beginning of knowledge, the standard greater than which there is nothing else. There is no alternative. But it's not an arbitrary standard. Because God is the creator and sustainer of the world in a way that provides an orderliness and a way to use our minds, use our rationality, use logic, use our senses in a way where knowledge can then be possible. If our minds and senses, which we use to know the world, were wrong, then all our beliefs would be unjustified. Knowledge would be impossible. Knowledge is possible, whether professed or not, because of the God of the Bible, who's the transcendent creator. This is consistent and non-arbitrary. It provides good reasons for an ultimate standard. It provides good reasons for a virtuous circle. And God has infinite knowledge, has revealed himself to his finite creatures. This is, con this is why the Bible says in Colossians 2, 2 and 3 that all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. An example of a biblical oath in scripture, when people wanted to swear oaths, and today even in the world, they swear by putting their hands on a Bible, by swearing by an authority greater than themselves. But listen to Hebrews 6, 13 and 16. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. So God couldn't swear by any authority greater than himself since he's the ultimate authority and standard being God as the creator. So when he wanted to show to Abraham the seriousness of what he was doing, he swore by himself. Verse 16, for men swear by one greater than themselves, by God, and with them an oath given as confirmation is an end to every dispute. But God, being greater must swear by himself, but he does so in a way that is non-arbitrary. 
All other worldviews depend on the worldview of biblical Christianity to be true because without those presuppositions, they result in fallacy, arbitrariness, or absurdity. This is destructive circular reasoning. Biblical Christianity, on the other hand, consistently encompasses and, 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 and accounts for all that is valid in all other worldviews without self-destruction. For that reason, while all other worldviews depend on the truth of the Bible, the Bible destroys all other worldviews. While claiming to be rational and empirical, these worldviews ultimately demonstrate irrationality and absurdity when their own standards are applied consistently. The truth is, without the biblical worldview, knowledge becomes impossible by the standard of other worldviews. In biblical terminology, professing to be wise, they became fools. The Munchausen trilemma demonstrates the self-defeating nature of all other worldviews that are arbitrary and absurd, and ultimately make knowledge impossible. These are the consequences of rejecting Jesus. When one rejects Jesus, one rejects truth. First Corinthians 1.20 says, Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world?